Hi, I'm Mina Harris. I'm a lawyer, entrepreneur, and author of Ambitious Girl, and I am proud to be a woman supporting women. I had a very young mom and part of my experience, which now has been really formative for me and I think important for me, not only my own parenting, but just how I view the world, my work ethic, seeing the world through the eyes and experiences of you know strong, powerful, ambitious women. My grandmother in many ways was sort of the almost narrator who was contextualizing, right, the importance of what my mom was doing, but also how hard she was working and that she was, you know, doing that for us and for our family. So I would say I now as a parent and an adult have a different perspective on it in many ways and that I now have all the context, right? And I really appreciate that experience in a different way than I may have sort of growing up. And, and most importantly, I think about, you know, how do I carry that forward in my own parenting, even though my circumstances are much different and that frankly, I have a lot more privileges than my mom had. The origins and, and the goal of, of how we started is very similar to frankly what we're doing now, which is raising awareness around issues that affect underrepresented communities. When we launched, we had a very specific emphasis on women and even further women of color. And one of the very first issues that we were advocating around was equal pay for women of color and making the point that for black women, for Latinas, for indigenous women, they don't experience pay equity until much, much later in the year than white women, for example. The very, very small initial idea was really just to raise money for women's organizations. Coming out of the 2016 election and going into the Women's March, I, like a lot of people, I think, you know, felt this jolt into sort of, you know, wanting to do more and to use my platform, my voice, my creative skills to do, you know, whatever I could to be a part of what we were seeing, which ultimately was, you know, this historic moment of women really rising up in ways that we've not seen before. Mommy! <laughs> Yeah. I think for the first kids book in particular, it was really my personal experience of becoming a new parent and having observations and you know experiences reading books to my now older daughter and really feeling moved to not only memorialize this you know really special story for my family to literally pass it on to my children, but also you know to think about issues around, for example, diversity and representation in the publishing industry and in, in children's literature. And I was seeing that, you know, before my eyes, as I was reading books with my kids, there is a lack of representation and diversity still. And we've made, a, you know, a lot of progress in the last three to five years. But, you know, I was reading books with my now older daughter and we would often be changing the pronouns from he to she, right? Or there were moments where we would take a brown marker and color the skin in because families like ours were not represented. For me as a creative and as a storyteller, a lot of what I do and put into the world is, you know, based on personal experience, which I think is the case for a lot of us. And then phenomenal generally, it's really about drawing attention to issues and experiences of underrepresented communities. And I view the book as sort of also fitting within that purpose. Ambitious girls, we get things done. If life's a race, we're ready to run. Literally in the last, I don't know, month been told that I'm too ambitious, which I'm like, thanks. That's literally why I wrote this book. And that is a line in the book. Like, thank you. This That's just all the more empowering. Go ahead. Continue to tell me all the things that I'm too good at or I'm too much of. The, the point is that often these are double standards that we do not apply to men. I've, I've never heard a man be called too ambitious or too direct or too competitive. Instead, it's like, he's a go-getter, right? He's about business. It's just not the same. And we need to acknowledge that. And what I put in the book, like reclaim that. There's power in these words and in this language that we use. And let's be clear that it is used often in a harmful way, you know, against women and redefine, right? And doing that, it's just one step towards, you know, ultimately changing culture and the way that we as a society tell women how to be and exist in the world.